A lot of Americans assume that the British royal family today is descended from the original British inhabitants of the Isles. In reality, the Britons were here first, and the Romans came in sometime later. When the Romans came in, they occupied Britain, they made their own system of government, and eventually they left during a time when Rome was weakening and the Anglo-Saxons were invading. So you had a period of time where the Britannic people were struggling to establish their own governments, and they were struggling in the face of the Anglo-Saxon invasion. The Anglo-Saxons invaded, pushing them over to Wales, to Cornwall, and up towards the Scottish borders. Eventually, the Anglo-Saxon governments encompassed all of England, pushing them truly towards the very peripheries. Cornish was cut off from Wales, and Cornish eventually died out in the 1700s as a language. Welsh continues to survive today, and where we are right now, Cumbria, the language here called Cumbric, died out many hundreds of years ago. It was spoken about in the Old North and Welsh poetry, but we don't really know what it is. It's said that some uh, Cumbrian farmers still speak the language only in terms of counting sheep, but the kingdom here, they did try to retain a Britannic government for a period of time, and the kingdom was called Ringed. Nobody knows what borders Ringed established, but we know for a fact that the past behind me did have a government of Ringed for a while, and we know this because there's a local legend that says that buried in the stone cairn behind me is the true last king of Ringed. The last true powerful king of Ringed was a man named Owain of Ringed. He died, ending the Britannic influence in Cumbria, but kings, basically vassal kings and local warlords continued paying tribute to the Anglo-Saxons until relatively, relatively recently. And it's, it's, it's thought that it continued surviving up until the Norman conquest and the Norman invasion in 1066, but the last true British rulers in the areas near Scotland. So the last place we were at was a rock pile of stones just on the overpass which would have led from Anglo-Saxon territory into the territory of Ranged or the Northern Kingdom or the Old North, a British Celtic outpost that had held off the Anglo-Saxon invasion. And here is a 10th century grave. The local legend is that it's just the grave of a giant and that he slayed four boars. And these four stones on the ground are supposed to represent the boars. but Another legend says that this is the grave of Owain Ranged. Now the grave that we saw earlier represents the last true king of Ranged, but this represents the last king that actually held diplomatic power and could challenge the Anglo-Saxon and Viking authorities. And what's so interesting about this grave here is that it's composed of two Anglo-Saxon crosses that are now pretty much worn down completely. This represents the Germanic invasion that they were fighting. And on the ground are four Scandinavian stones. These would have been Vikings. So this represents essentially the British people before like the native people, before the uh, Anglo-Saxon invasion, before the Germanic influence, fighting off and creating a kingdom of their own. Now once Owain of Ranged died, he was basically replaced by an Anglo-Saxon influx and a Viking influx, and the various kings that arose after him were basically just paying fealty and paying to bend the knee to the Anglo-Saxons while being given the authority over a few villages. And they were mainly symbolic, but this is the last true king of the Old North of Cumbria and of the Britons in this part of England.
Some markings on that guy that look kind of Celt. <laughs> 